A portion of today's video is kindly sponsored by Thrive Market. Raise your hand if you've been personally victimized by the capsule wardrobe craze. Okay, victimized, granted, is kind of a harsh word, but if you're anything like me and you've tried out the whole capsule wardrobe, 333 method, or other methods out there, and you're really striving to make everything perfectly mix and matchable, and you're left feeling like all of a sudden your personal style has kind of packed up and left, then I hope this video is an encouragement to you. We're gonna chat a bit about my experience with capsule wardrobe and simplifying my clothing collection as I do this season's closet clean out for the springtime. I'm also bringing in a couple of really intentional new pieces and sharing with you how I've kind of arrived at my own personal style evolving as it is. There is a specific piece that I am adding this season that I have never added before, something that I've wanted since childhood and it's kind of been controversial in my life so stay tuned for that. That. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Natalie, and I like to make the topic of simple living or minimalism approachable and applicable to real life, real homes, real bodies. Let's hop into the closet and get this party started. Okay, speaking of real homes, this is what our closet currently looks like right now. This is my husband's side, complete with his clean laundry in a basket there waiting for him to put it away. This is his dresser. He also uses my bottom drawer of my taller dresser that I've got here. This is my side of the closet. You can tell, hey, I'm a cardigan girl. Over here in my drawers, things are kind of just piling up. The drawers get messy. That's real life. Could use a bit of straightening up, so that's what we're gonna do today. Here is the game plan. Over the years, I have learned whether I have a super minimal sort of traditional capsule wardrobe or a more beefier collection in my closet, that the best first step is to just clear everything out. Make a pile on my bed and start going through it. Now, I don't know what it's like where you live, but here in the Pacific Northwest, spring and fall, we can have four seasons in one day. On March 1st, here where we live, it snowed, hailed, rained, and was 60 degrees outside in the beautiful sunshine all in one day. So layering is usually my best bet, which means that I will probably take my heaviest of heavies and pack them away. So this wool blend turtleneck sweater, that can go, but I know I'm gonna wear that next winter, so it's staying in my collection, just not at the forefront of what I'm grabbing from. If you've seen my other closet declutter videos, then you'll know that as someone with chronic pain um, and flare-ups that happen with my chronic illness, which is abdominal migraine syndrome, I am always on the lookout for pants that are cute and have some structure, but have a really soft, comfortable waistband. These look the part, but when I put them on, <laughs> it was a no for me, dog. So in addition to finding things that are not right for this particular season, I'm also finding things, of course, that it's time to declutter out. I might even be able to return these. I will have to check on that, but I'm gonna continue going through what is in those two drawers that I keep my current wardrobe in and doing this decluttering and sorting out. And while I do that, we're gonna take a quick ad break and thank you so much to Thrive Market for sponsoring a little portion of today's video. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Have you ever cuddled up with a good book on a rainy afternoon and suddenly had a hankering for a nature's bakery, gluten-free fig bar? This would go very well with a spot of tea. Reishi masala chai, to be exact. Or perhaps Catnip and Chill by Shameless Pets Cat Treats is more your style. Whatever you, or your cats, or children, or grandparents, or everyone in between has a hankering for, you can most likely find it on thrivemarket.com, which is a membership-based online grocery store on a mission to make healthy living affordable for everyone. And I really mean everyone. It's incredibly easy on the Thrive Market website to use their search filters that they have for all sorts of different dietary needs and lifestyles, including keto, paleo, gluten-free, raw, vegan, vegetarian, the list goes on. You may be asking what an online grocery store may be doing in a video about closets and clothing. Well, 
Thrive Market is my absolute favorite place to buy most of my laundry essentials. This is my all time favorite laundry soap. It's by Indigo Wild and it smells like dreams come true. I've been using this laundry soap for almost 10 years and Thrive Market is by far the cheapest place to buy it. In fact, they stand behind their good prices so much that they have a price match guarantee. If you find it cheaper somewhere else, they will match the price for you. That's amazing. Thrive Market runs deals all the time. Their prices are amazing. In fact, with this order alone, I saved over $50. And this is the first time that I've ever ordered some travel essentials. So Weston and I, in the next several weeks, are traveling to Ireland for a family wedding on his side. And I picked up some TSA friendly lip balm, skincare eye masks. Of course, you gotta have some hand sanitizing wipes and a sleep mask for the long flight across the pond. I continue to be impressed with the selection and all of the categories of items that Thrive Market offers. If you'd like to check out Thrive Market for yourself, save some cash, and help support my channel in the process, then you can go to the link in my description box or type in thrivemarket.com slash Natalie Bennett. Two N's and two T's, if you please, darling, unlike how Ms. Austin spells it here. That link will get you 30% off your first order with them, plus they'll send you a free gift worth up to $60 in value. Thanks so much to Thrive Market for sponsoring that portion of today's video. You know what else would go well with this? Some excellent boiled potatoes. These days it always amazes me how quickly this process goes to sort through my clothing and do some decluttering. I've been only working for about 10 minutes and I've already made it through all of my drawers. I do still have to go through my hanging clothing, but that'll probably be half the time it took me to do this. So I went through all of those drawers. I pulled out the heaviest heavies and actually the lightest lights because it's not quite warm enough to be wearing my shorts and lightest tank tops and tank dresses and stuff like that. So that sort of rotational drawer, is that what we're calling it now? If you saw my last closet declutter video, then you may remember that I broke up with the seasonal bin for many reasons. I'll actually link that video in the description box if you want to go check it out. TLDR, it's just so much simpler and easier to have everything right there in front of me, not be storing a bin up at the top of my closet or under my bed. I found that I kept way more stuff that I wasn't actually wearing that I didn't actually need. This has just been such a better method for me. So I'm going to take everything that I've sorted through here, get them back in their respective drawers and go through the hanging clothing. I'm always so happy to see this pretty piece back in my rotation for the spring and summer. I did find a few things that just didn't quite work for me for the colder months and I'm not gonna bring them back out again. So it's time to part with them. We still have a little ways to go with the refining of this collection, especially since I do have a couple of more pieces that I'm going to be adding to what I have here. But I did bring forward the lighter blouses and uh, dresses. And then I have heavier cardigans and sweaters and jackets and coats and stuff like that toward the back. You know what? This thing that I'm touching right here 
this sort of wool blend jacket. I've had this for years and years. I reached for the tan camel one this year, but I never wore the gray one. And I told myself when I was putting these out, when I pulled them out of my seasonal bin at the start of fall, that if I did not wear this during this cold season, that it's time to let it go. And you know what? There's no question in my mind that this one has served its time and now it's time to let it go. Since we're here and I'm adding to my little declutter pile, um, I thought I would just kind of show you what I've got over here. This piece, I thrifted it and it didn't fit from day one. When you thrift things, you can't really return them, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna be passing this on. I accidentally shrunk this cashmere sweater, but it will probably fit someone out there. I've got an old retro Seahawks sweatshirt that's actually really uncomfortable. It's really scratchy on the inside of that embroidered graphic. I don't really choose it. I've got some leggings look like sheer tights on skin, but it didn't really work for me. It was kind of a sweaty mess, if I'm being honest. So washed those up and donating those. Those are those pants that I showed you earlier. Got a sweater here that didn't quite work for me. And then I picked a couple of things from that rotational bin for summertime that I know are not good fits anymore. So I'm passing on those. And I like to do kind of a one in one out, one in, two out sort of method when I am anticipating adding to my collection. So I've got about eight or nine pieces here. I will continue to refine a little bit more as I go. But you know what? Speaking of adding to, let's hop to a bit of a haul and a heart to heart. Okay, welcome to the clothing haul, which is so weird for me to say, because it has been years since I've like sat down and shown new pieces of clothing. A couple of years ago, I felt that like the sort of oversized t-shirt and leggings and sneakers was a little bit too um, edgy and not put together enough for kind of who I was. And I've discovered that I really actually feel very cute and put together and kind of sporty and fun and youthful when I do have that sort of uniform on. And so I've been on the lookout for cute, comfortable, sort of retro vibes t-shirts that fit the bill. This is one of them. I actually recently found a uh, brand. It was on an Instagram ad and I went, ah, oh, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. They have Christian sayings or actual scripture on them with really fun graphics that sort of have that retro twist. And these are really fun to just throw on with leggings or sweatpants or jeans um, and then a pair of sneakers, which we'll get to the sneakers in a second. Okay, next up, one of my favorite brands to follow on Instagram, New Flora. One of their pieces is that sort of yellowy, mustardy, empire waistline crepe sort of material dress. It's what I was wearing during the ad read of this video. I love that dress. I wore it to Texas. I wore it um, all throughout the summertime last year and I anticipate wearing it here in spring. I was very eager to pull that one back out. And I thought I would like this one as well. I mean, just look at that darling sort of micro floral print. It's so pretty on the website and even just holding it up here. It's beautiful and it's actually crafted really, really well. But putting it on, I don't know if it's because I ordered the wrong size or if it's just the wrong sort of style to be comfortable on my body, but I just feel like it wasn't doing me any favors. Maybe this kind of puff sleeve look. I just felt kind of uh, milk matey. <laughs> In it I don't know and I love to support smaller brands but I'm always honest with you guys um, I'm actually even an affiliate with this brand piece that I just have to send back that's that's a bummer but they have a wonderful return policy and their customer service is amazing one of the pieces that I think I am going to keep from them which just makes me so happy um, is this beautiful checkered uh, button front shirt. And I really like the way that this one hangs on my body and coordinates with other pieces in my wardrobe. I could probably slip this on and it would even look cute, kind of layered up with this piece as well. How would I do 
the rest of this segment wearing this together. And this month, I'm actually filming sort of a week of outfits video using some of these pieces to mix and match and put outfits together. And I'm going to be posting it over on my Patreon, just five bucks a month. And we have a lot of fun over there. Oh, this is a fun one. Okay, something else that I've learned over the years about my personal style is that I don't mind being kind of silly and niche <laughs> with what I choose to wear, like having random shirts with funny references and pop culture stuff on them. So I have this sweatshirt. I ordered this from a small shop off of Etsy. Pemberley, oh, I love it so much. So if you don't know, this is the estate of Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, one of my all-time favorite movies, and yes, I love both versions. And something that my eye is drawn to whenever I'm looking through uh, outfit inspiration or style bloggers or whatever is a sort of collegiate crew neck oversized sweatshirt. But I have found that I don't really want to wear a college plastered across my chest. Um, and so when I found this one, I was just absolutely in love. And I have actually worn this a couple of times. It's so comfortable and cozy. This is one that I will probably keep in my collection 365 days a year. I also purchased another uh, Pride and Prejudice sweatshirt. Let me show you what I got. It's the excellent boiled potatoes sweatshirt. And I think it might be the color of this one that I just don't really dig when I put it on. It came in multiple different colors. This is the one that I liked best just online, but I probably should have ordered something that complements my own coloring just a little bit more. I'm an autumn, which I have thoughts about that too, just a second, but I don't think the shop accepts returns and I kind of wouldn't want to do that to them anyway, because it is handmade. So I'll probably offer this to one of my uh, Jane Austen loving sisters or my mom. Another sort of, I'll just wear what I want item that I recently picked up is this adorable little Snoopy hat. Isn't that so cute. I just love to wear things that bring a smile to my kid's face. I have several Snoopy shirts. My kids just love when I wear it. They always notice it and it makes them happy and it makes me happy. So I uh, picked this one up from American Eagle. Something about my personal style that I have learned is if it makes me go, oh, and I kind of get like giggly and giddy about it, like the Pemberley sweatshirt or the um, Snoopy hat, or if it makes me go, oh, I love this then it belongs in my collection. Even if it doesn't necessarily coordinate with everything that I have in my more minimal wardrobe. Not everything has to be mix and match like perfectly with everything else. Although it does help and it does give you more options, it's okay to kind of stray outside of that. And that is definitely something that I've learned and sort of stepped away from with the traditional Pinterest worthy blogger style capsule wardrobes. Uh, something, however, that is an absolute staple, absolute classic that pretty much goes with anything is a pair of black slim fit jeans. I don't think these are necessarily slim enough to be called skinny jeans, but here's another thing that I've learned. I can wear wider pants, I can wear skinny jeans, and I don't care what other people think. The sort of culture war between Gen Zers and millennials just gives me the ick. Who cares if I part my hair on the side or the center? I'm not out here to impress millennials. I'm not out here to impress Gen Zers or any generation for that matter. Okay, back to these jeans though. Oh my goodness. I've talked about these before. Um, it's the Ginger and Dandelion brand. Nicole is just such a sweetheart. Her vision for this brand of creating denim that is so ridiculously comfortable in the waist for people like me who struggle with abdominal pain or chronic illness. I have these in a medium wash with a more straight leg, and I do have the dark wash slim leg. That's the same style as these black ones. Ever since sharing these with you guys several months ago, I've had so many of you reach out who have purchased these as well and go, oh my gosh, 
I can wear denim again. <laughs> um, and that's exactly what I was like. And I kid you not, when I put these on for the first time, I literally just sat on the floor and cried. And then continued crying because I realized, oh my gosh, I'm sitting on the floor in a pair of jeans and they're not digging into my abdomen and triggering a migraine for me. Like it was an amazing sort of moment. I said, oh, it would be such a dream come true if they came out with a black wash. And she heard me and she actually sent these out to me to test out as they were working on different little iterations of the stitching and the finishes and the cut and everything. And so I was one of the first people able to test these and they are absolutely amazing. And by the time this video goes up, these have launched for everyone to be able to buy. And I'm just so excited about that. They are absolutely worth the investment. Okay, 100,000 interruptions, two meals later, it's getting chilly, so I <laughs> put the Pemberley sweatshirt on. I'm going to start piecing in what I have new here that I'm not going to be returning, but I wanted to show you sort of a last but certainly not least. Are you ready for it? My first ever pair of chucks. Some of you are gonna think I'm totally silly. This is kind of an emotional moment for me and let me try to quickly explain why. So growing up, I always wanted a pair of Converse's. Classic, high top, canvas sneakers. They're just the standard, right? I just felt like all the cool kids wore them. They were a bit pricey back then for our family and that's totally okay. We're all in different places at different times, but even when I could afford them and I was a bit older, I always felt like something was telling me that I could not have a pair of these based on very subjective and kind of, um, random arbitrary reasons why. My best friend growing up, she wore chucks, jeans, and a t-shirt. That was like what she wore. And I always thought that these were so cute. But I was told, not by her, uh, love you Tess, I was told by other people that I was too short to wear high top sneakers. I am a whole five foot nothing. Uh, my friend was always six or seven inches taller than me. And so I just kind of bought that idea that, oh, I'm just, I'm too tall for Converse's. And then I was told you're too young, only teenagers wear them. And now I'm told, oh, you're too old. Moms certainly don't wear Converse. Who are you trying to be? And one day I was looking at a different brand of canvas high top sneakers and I went, why am I just not buying the real thing? Why am I still holding myself back based on rules that other people made about me and what I should or should not wear? I'm gonna buy the darn sneakers. So I did. I accidentally bought a men's seven and not a woman's seven. So these actually have to go back. Uh, they're like three sizes too big for me at this point. Oh, that's another thing. Someone told me that I would look like I'm wearing clown shoes because I'm too short to wear these. Like they would make my feet look big. These, this size would make my feet look big because they're not proportionate to my height because they're the literal wrong size. But I feel like the whole Chuck conundrum is a microcosm for a bigger issue, which is that you need to follow someone else's set of rules for what you wear. You'll notice that I, throughout this um, haul and rant, <laughs> never used the word flattering. And I personally feel like that word has kind of become an abusive term to try to manipulate people into fitting into a specific type of style or type of dressing. The exemplary vegetable sweatshirt, you know what? It's not the most flattering color, but if I stood there and felt cute in this sweatshirt, that absolutely trumps conventional rules about what season I am, or what body shape I am, or what stature I am. It's kind of crazy to me that it has taken me nearly 32 years to learn the lesson that it's not about how something actually looks on me, but how I feel wearing it. I actually think it's why I gravitate in my closet toward 
rusty, warm sort of autumn tones is because I actually feel good wearing things that do truly complement my natural coloring and how God made me. But then I sort of buck conventional do's and don'ts when I choose to wear a high top sneaker with a 25 inch inseam. You know, if someone thinks that I look like I have clown feet when I wear Converse's, it's actually none of my business. You know what else is none of my business? What other people do with their clothing collection. And it's taken me a while to learn to have my own personal style that doesn't actually fit in perfectly with what everyone else is doing. A lot of the time, this minimalism content or pictures that you see on Pinterest with all of these different pieces in a capsule wardrobe put together in a perfectly curated little snapshot isn't the full picture of what someone goes through in order to get to that point. And it's not always an applicable style to what makes you feel best when you put on an outfit. Highly simplifying and minimizing the number of clothing pieces that I have in my collection has absolutely changed my life. Uh, that is not being dramatic. I have probably 80% less clothing than I did four years ago when I started my minimalism journey. But I would say in the last couple of years, I think I've kind of miss the forest for the trees, so to speak, um, with my own personal style and trying to kind of fit into an arbitrary mold when in fact I have actually sort of busted out of that recently and realized that I am someone who enjoys multiple different styles that are kind of polar opposites on any given day. So maybe that means one day I am the sporty mom who can rock an oversized tee and a pair of chucks. Or perhaps I'm the wannabe bookish girly who pours herself a cup of tea, dons an empire waistline dress, and now realizes that I have outed myself as the nerd I truly am. Or maybe I'm a garden granny and I wear whatever's comfortable and I'm okay getting dirty in. Or maybe I'm a small business owner and busy mom and I throw on whatever is clean. Guess it's been way too long since I did laundry. Maybe I'm none of these people. Or perhaps I am all of these things. That's okay. And who knows which side of my style or likes or dislikes I'll discover between now and when I turn 42 or 52. And you know what? Having a capsule wardrobe has really helped me during times of my life where I crave the simplest of simple and I need it to sort of manage itself. I'm kind of in a stage of life right now where I can get away with having a little bit outside of that stricter uh, number or method and I'm not stressed out by it. Our bandwidth for that sort of thing I believe changes. That's one of the biggest things I've learned about minimalism is what it looks like for you one year may be completely different than what it looks like for you the next year or the next season even. So go easy on yourself, wear what you want to wear, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was really fun to be able to just kind of share my heart, share a clothing haul with you. Like, who am I? I'm someone who likes to buy clothing every now and then, even if it is a Snoopy embroidered baseball cap or a pair of tennis shoes that I've been told my whole life I may not have. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for coming along with me for it and being my buddy. I have a bonus video going up here in the month of March. Typically I do like an every other week upload schedule. March and April are going to stray from that because of holiday and travel plans that we have in April. If you missed the sponsored portion of today's video, I mentioned that Weston and I are going to Ireland in a few weeks. I'm so excited about it. It's for a family wedding over on his side and I'm gonna take a real holiday. So there's bonus video going up in March to kind of tide you over while we're across the pond. You'll wanna turn your notifications on so you don't miss when it goes up. So thanks for spending a little part of your day here with me on my channel and I'll catch you later.